Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dusty Tucker. I have a firearm video for you guys today. I know some of you guys are getting sick of the knife videos. I can I can just see the less and less and less people. <laughs> but don't worry about it. I picked up a new to me revolver and it actually may look even new new, but it's not, I assure you. This is definitely not a new new. This is a new to me. This is an 1861 Navy. And when I seen the pictures of it, I thought it was an 1860 Army. But there's slight differences between the two. And absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. This guy is an older model. This is an Army Sam Paolo, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, 36 cal. My first 36 cal percussion revolver. Pretty awesome. I've always wanted to get a 36 cal, and I've always wanted an 1860 Army, but an 1861 Navy, I'll take it. <laughs> it it looks, they look pretty similar. There's a few differences, but uh, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. There's just a few little defects with it, but honestly, the fit and finish is better than some of Pieta's quality. Like, look at this wood and brass and metal connection. The wood isn't sticking out ridiculously. Actually, it's not even sticking out at all. It's pretty much all flush in there. Beautiful fit and finish. Don't ask me what year it is. I'm not sure. I would say late 70s, early 80s, maybe. Um, but the fit and finish on this is definitely better than some of Pieta's quality in the past. So good for them. Even though this is not this is made in Italy. Um it's kind of like Euro Arms' um, better quality revolvers, from what I've heard anyways. The Army San Paolo was better than the Army San Marco or whatever it is. And the, the Paolos apparently were more closer to u -birdies. So, I don't know. This is my first one. I've never seen some of the stamps, like this guy here can't really see it I know it's just my phone um it's DGG in a circle I've never seen that stamp on a cap and ball before so maybe someone can enlighten me that'd be great um it's probably just a different um stamp but our, this is the first cog style loading lever that I've had and I actually really like it it seems really strong and just magnificent like I I actually like it. I'm not going to... I'm used to the little... The pinion swivel one, which is like on the 1850 uh, navies and stuff like that. But I I honestly really like this. And I like the looks of it. I, uh, I've always kind of wanted the 1860 Army, 1861 Navy revolver. And I finally got one. So I'm pumped. This was actually... I found this one local, which is strange. Because me finding firearms, like black powder firearms, in local... In like the same town that's insane like that's just unheard of for me i i usually have to go to saskatoon or bc or get it shipped in from a different province but or the local gun clubs but um yeah no this is this is a beautiful revolver for what i paid for it i ain't gonna complain the only thing that i had to do was replace the hammer spring because the hammer spring was so weak on it it would it wouldn't set off the caps half the time and the guy mentioned me, he mentioned to me that, look at the color case on the back, like for, for how old this gun is, it's really bright and shiny. And I know it's just an acid dipped version of it, but it's not actually color cased, but you know what I mean? Like awesome. Better than Pieta's sometimes, in fact, actually. Um, one thing I really like about the 1850 Navy, the 1860 Army, and the 1861 Navies over the 1858 Remingtons is on the back here, I don't know what this place is called, where the arbor connects this back frame piece, you have an, a slot that goes alongside and it has you have a less chance of your caps sliding off of there. And for, for here, on the loading side, it doesn't really matter because once you're done shooting, they just kind of fall off there anyways. I like that. The, the, the Remington is kind of a pain in the butt, which is why I hard, think I hardly ever see anybody shooting Remingtons in um, cowboy action because they, they're, their nipples are slightly 
canted off to the side. And if you don't have the correct size nipples on there, just from the vibrations and concussion of shooting, sometimes they will just fall off. And they can easily just fall off because of the way they're designed. Um, I actually have my Remington out right now. See how they, uh, that, that can easily fall off. Especially on this side. And then they're, 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 the nipples are recessed in farther and the frame is way back here. So that can easily fall off. And in case you guys are wondering, this is a really old, um, there's not even any really marks on it. I think it's a, I never really checked it out to be honest. I know it's in old Italy. I think this is an Army Sam Mar Marco or whatever it is. I think it's one of them, but it's a uh, Euro Arms, I think. It's, um, I'm not sure how old this is, but this isn't, <laughs> this video is not about that revolver. I just kind of wanted to show you why I like these styles better. Um, what's another thing? Um, yeah, the fit and finish is beautiful on it. The cylinder, everything was like machined better than some of Pieta's. Some of Pieta's have some pretty rough machining marks that Remington is even worse. That Remington has got a really rough machining marks on it. Like it looked like it was, I don't know. It looks almost like an original. Like it's, I don't know. Anyway, um, one thing I do love about this older model, I'll take it apart so you can see it. The cylinder is... The chambers, the chamber mouths have been um, factory um, kind of reamed out or beveled out. I'll show you. It's going to be kind of hard to see it, but you can see that it's not a straight. Where, where can I show you on an angle where you'll see it? Wow. Oh. My flashlight's dead, so that's unfortunate. But I'll take a ball and I'll show you. So it's a 36 cal ball. You see how far it goes in that mouth? Most most uh, of the modern ones don't have that. You can't do that to them. They'll, they'll shave off lead. This one compresses it. And it, it kind of has a tapered uh, mouth on each cylinder. I actually prefer that over shaving the lead off. Because if you have an oblong sized ball. Let's say you your, your ball isn't perfectly round um and, the, and it shaves off there's a slight chance you could get a spark past your ball and into your powder and get a chain fire um and when you take one of these and you get you get it squished in it has a chance to make the uh to fill out the circumference of that cylinder better than it would be just shaving off lead and yes um Lots of people will, will um, argue the differences between chain fires and what actually is. Some people think it's the lube that stops it. Some people think it's the actual seal of the ball, in my opinion, that will stop chain fires. Um, the lube probably helps a little bit. And sometimes you can actually get it back past the frame and into it. If your cap falls off, it can happen that way too. But um, if you're really careful, you won't have a problem. This guy, um, the nipples are different than my 51 Navy. So this guy actually takes CCI number 10s. Um, Remington number 11s tend to slide off. So unless I take Remington number 10s and kind of squeeze them, they'll fit on. But other than, otherwise, I'll just use CCI number 10s. So I like to carry different different types of um, percussion caps when I'm going to the range just in case a certain kind doesn't really like to work out but yeah fit and finish on this thing is pretty good the metal on the inside it's it's a little bit rough in some spots but it's not terrible so I definitely picked this up I wasn't gonna not pick it up because I am obsessed with buying firearms that I can easily fix and that sort of thing. Everything is kind of rugged and chunky on it, but 
it all goes back together perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. I've shot it twice, three times now. And let me tell you, the 36 cal, don't underestimate the, uh, the accuracy of these things because holy crap. Um, my one friend was shooting at 25 yards and I really wanted to shoot. So I loaded this thing out and I said, well, I'm not used to shooting that far with a percussion revolver. But I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take the challenge anyway. So cocked my first round, aimed carefully, fired, and the very first shot was dead center of bullseye. And the other ones weren't too far off. So I was pretty pumped. And then I had one shot that was, that was a flyer. And I could never figure that out until I took it home and cleaned it. I realized one of these cylinders have a really bad machining mar from the drill bit. And you can see it just like marred, like I carved a huge, it almost looks like rifling inside of the, uh, inside the cylinder. And I'm pretty sure that is, because every time I would load this thing up, once in a while, there'd be one ball that's just way out to lunch. And I don't know if it's because of that, but also because of that, like I don't want a chance of a spark flying in back there and causing a chain fire. So what I'm gonna start doing is when I go to a range, I'm gonna take a chunk of red plastic or something and just shove it in there. That way I don't have to worry about not loading that round or maybe I'll figure something out. I'll stick something in there or maybe I'll just, oh, I don't wanna take the nipple off. Or I could take the nipple off. If there's going to be no powder in there, I could just take that nipple out so I avoid loading that cylinder. I could do that. But anyways, I only shoot five anyways. I don't load all six, even when I'm at the range, because I'm just I'm used to just loading, load one, skip one, and then load four. That's just the way I've always done it, it's even with cartridge guns, except for when it comes to, like, uh, modern double action revolvers where you have the side gate that comes out and that's totally safe to load six i mean they're meant to hold six so uh, in times of war yeah if you're in combat you would load six because why not but if you're just carrying it you want to make sure that you're carrying it on an empty empty uh cylinder so it's just safe practice even even if there's a transfer bar and all that whatever people will argue but i don't care Make your own channel and argue in your favor. I don't give a crap. Anyway, that's just what I'm used to. It's funny how the people that, um, all the haters and whatever you want to call them, trolls and shit like that, you go on YouTube and they don't even have any content. So, I mean, they don't, they shouldn't get a, ch if you have no content, you don't get the right to bitch until you actually make your own content, post it and have your own reasonings and everything and your own opinions, then, okay, sure, he's at least putting an effort into, you know. But other than that, like if I see someone comment something's dumb on my channel, I'll look at his and, and he's got none and his opinion doesn't matter anyways because it's, it's completely invalid to where anything is going that I'm trying to get to explain. And But anyways, that's getting way off topic here. So yeah, recap, 1861 Navy, 36 cal, uh, Euro Arms imported, Ar Army San uh, Paolo, I think. And um, I usually shoot 15 grains, uh, 15 to 17 grains. Sometimes um, I'll take my powder measure here, I'll set it at 15 grains, and I'll leave it, if it, if it goes a little bit of a higher bubble, I don't just, because I don't like to waste powder, I think that's, I don't know. If it's, if it's a little bit higher and I know that if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna fling some off, I will just kinda tap it until it like settles down and then I'll pour it. So 15, 17 grains is what I typically shoot with this. I don't like to waste powder. Components are getting a little bit expensive. That's how I do it, that's how I've always done it. Never had a problem. Um, plus two grains of powder, I mean, it's not gonna be the life or death. Um, so, absolutely impressed. If you guys have a chance to check out an Army Sam Paolo, send it. You never know. It's, it could be, especially with the price, 
new revolvers like this in Canada run, even Pietas, run for 700 bucks now. Seven, eight hundred dollars even. U birdies will run closer to a thousand. They were never that high. Five years ago, when I bought my 1851 Navy for like four hundred and thirty dollars, that's that was cheap back then. But now it's crazy. I can't like you must you might as well buy a cartridge gun if you're gonna buy a black powder gun. Like it's, ew, man, they're getting so expensive, and it's just gonna keep going up and up and up. It's just ridiculous. So that's why whenever I see a uh, a lightly used revolver like this that I can actually check out before I purchase. Done deal. Especially if it's if it if it's good. I like how they even left a knot on the wood. I kind of like that. There's a knot right here on that wood. I actually really like that. That's kind of cool. You don't really see that on a whole lot of revolvers, but I like it. It gives it more character. But anyways, if you guys have a chance, 36, 36 cal, this is my first one, love it. Um, if you think about it, you'll use less if you're a caster like I am and you have a mold and all that, If you, you'll you use less lead. So I mean, you, you can actually shoot more for the same amount of lead as you could with a 40, 45 or 44 cal. So absolutely, uh, definitely recommend the older models. Um, that's pretty much all I got for this video. I apologize if I haven't really been on top of my videos, but I've been just busy with the season changing and everything like that. I got a lot of stuff outside that I need to do. <clears throat> my um, basement flooded um, in the fall before, so I'm, I'm still cleaning up crap after that. I got to build up my foundation, the dirt on the one side, and put like a vapor barrier and all sorts of stuff like that also need a haircut <laughs> but yeah um i can't wait i'm sorry i can't get i can't show you any shooting footage of this revolver i just don't have any yet i've only taken it out twice and i've been with friends i don't like to shoot videos with my friends around because i kind of want to be with my friends enjoying their company and not messing around with the cameras and stuff like that so i just maybe one day i'll actually have somebody hold the camera for me it'll probably be a lot easier but um yeah definitely check one of these out if you guys have a chance just because it's cheap it doesn't mean it is garbage you might just have to end up replacing a, a hammer spring like i did so maybe it maybe it's worth it check it out you never know what you're gonna find the brass on this is still really good i shine it up a little bit but not too too much just a little bit of brasso on my finger and just kind of gave it a little rub here and there because it was really dark it kind of, it was like, uh, it was, it looked like this. You can see the difference on the brass. I just wanted it a little bit shinier because it had a really nice blued finish with the color case harden and everything like that. This is a project. My buddy's, this is my buddy's revolver. I have to, um, this is actually the spring that was out of this. I just put it in there so it would be functional-ish. You see how wide that is? It doesn't even go inside the frame, so you can't even full cock it. But it's just there, so I don't lose it, and it's not the right size. It sticks out past the brass. If stuff like that happens, just, you know, just work with it. But I don't want to work with this spring because it is way too weak. That's the spring that barely set off the caps on this one. Replace that spring. I have to do a bunch of work to this gun so my friend can use it again. But anyways, we'll see you guys next time. Keep shooting that black powder. And uh, maybe I'll get a shooting video out there eventually once I renew my membership. Until then, you guys. Oh, in case you guys don't know, one more thing. In Canada, what I mean by needing a membership is um, you have to shoot these. Any kind of revolver or pistol or restricted firearm you have to shoot it at a range legally so it kind of sucks for people like like me enthusiasts that uh, it's just it, it's mind-boggling in canada like it's a percussion gun you're gonna god forbid i know you're not gonna see somebody go and rob a store with a percussion gun i'm sorry but i think that's why the more people that know about these firearms if somebody did 
you could look at it and be like, yeah, that's not loaded. <laughs> Sorry, like you're not you're not taking this money from me. <laughs> but people wouldn't choose this to go rob a store or to do crime with. Like it's just Canada laws are so dumb. Don't want to get involved with that. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys this time. So Dusty Tucker signing out. Keep shooting that black powder. Sorry, I kind of rambled on on this video, and. I don't know, that's just the way I like to do it. I like to just have unedited, just blabber chatter, whatever. It's a nice revolver. Didn't pay over the top for it. So, keep shooting. <laughs>